This is going to be a very niche video, but I really want to make it. I have been asked to make the video on mecha design, but instead of using something relatively simple, like GURP Spaceships 4, Fighters, Carriers and Mecha, or Modular Mecha from Pyramid 351, I am going to do it the convoluted way, using GURPS vehicles for the third edition. So, this will serve as a demonstration of mecha design and vehicle design and conversion to the 4th edition. Step 1. Tech level. On this step, I have to decide on the tech level. Keep in mind that tech levels have changed between GURPS editions, so I'll use 4E TL10, which roughly corresponds to TL9 in 3E. Step 2. Concept. Is it going to be a ground, water, air or space vehicle? I want to make our mecha a ground vehicle with limited flight capabilities. Step 3. Sub-assemblies. Every vehicle has a main body, but some have sub-assemblies attached to them. There are three categories of sub-assemblies – motive sub-assemblies, flight sub-assemblies and structures. Our mecha will be a two-legged vehicle. So let's give it two leg sub-assemblies. I mentioned that I want to give the mecha limited flight capabilities, but I was having something like a jetpack in mind. Flight sub-assemblies are wings, rotors or surface effect skirts, so our mecha will not have any. As for the structures, the mecha will have two arm structures and one open weapon mount on the shoulder with limited rotating. That allows pivots of up to 180 degrees. An open mount must have some empty space assigned to it. Let's assign it 4 cubic feet. That should be enough to mount something like a minigun. Step 4. Body features. Since the mecha has legs, arms and an open mount, I can only give it fair streamlining. This will affect the top speed when moving through an atmosphere. You can give your vehicle sloped armor, but I will not give it to our mecha. Step 5. Components. This is the biggest step, because this is where I will select all the components – propulsion systems, electronics, weaponry, etc. Each component will have weight, volume, cost and may also have power consumption. First, let's select our propulsion system, I mean systems, plural, because our mecha has to operate both on the ground and in air. For ground movement, I select the leg drivetrain, and for the air movement, I select the fusion rocket engine. All these systems have their weight, volume and cost, depend on how much motive power they generate. But at this point I do not know how much power I will need, so I will just note down the numbers and later put them in the spreadsheet. However, here is something that I did not take into account. The rocket engine that I chose can only be used when the vehicle is already in the air. They generate thrust but not lift. So I have two options – either include separate lift engines or make the existing fusion rocket engines vectored thrust engines. This will let them divide their thrust between lift and forward thrust. However, this will multiply their weight, volume and cost by 1.5. The next component category is the built-in weaponry. I mentioned the open mount before, but that mount can hold any appropriate weapon. Built-in weapons must be permanently or semi-permanently integrated into the vehicle. Let's have a plasma gatling gun attached to the arm. This is a weapon from GURPS Ultratech for the 4th edition, so I will just note down the statistics and work out the power consumption and other 3E parameters in reverse. Next up are instruments and electronics. First up, let's give our mecha a radio communicator. A medium-range TL9 radio will have the following characteristics. A modern powered vehicle is assumed to have headlights by default, but let's also give the mecha 
infrared searchlights, they will have the following characteristics. For active sensors, let's give our maker a simple radar with a range of, let's say, 5 miles. At TL9 it has the following characteristics. For passive sensors, let's give our maker a thermograph with a range of 1 mile. At TL9 it has the following characteristics. Let's also add a digital vehicle camera. The maker isn't intended to travel for very long distances, but it still requires a navigation system. Let's give it a military GPS. Since it's a military vehicle, let's give it IFF to prevent friendly fire. As a targeting system, the maker will use its radar, but I think that adding a HUD whack will be appropriate. A military maker should have some electronic countermeasures. Let's give it an advanced radar detector. A maker should have a computer, because it's an Ultratech vehicle after all. However, GURPS vehicles has outdated numbers for computers. To be fair, so does GURPS Ultratech for the 4th edition, but it's still better, especially when using updated rules from Pyramid. Let's take power consumption values from GURPS vehicles and take the rest from GURPS Ultratech. Thus, a TL10 personal computer should have the following characteristics. In addition to the computer itself, the Mecha will need a terminal to access it. Yet again, GURPS Ultratech has newer values for terminals. Instead of giving the Mecha an actual terminal, let's give it a head-up display. We are finally done with electronics, but there are still other components that have to be done. Our Mecha has two arms, so we have to add two arm motors. I do not know how much strength I will need, so I will just write down the numbers. Also, you should keep in mind that strength works differently in 3E and 4E, and uh, I will use the conversion formula from GURPS update. Let's add some other minor components, such as the compact fire suppression system. Now, here's another aspect of the vehicle that we haven't discussed yet. Controls and crew stations. Since we have a computer and a terminal, let's give the maker computerized controls. Our maker will be crewed by a single person, so let's add one cramped crew station. There is no need for extra occupant space, cargo and so on, but we will need some environmental systems. Let's give it normal environmental control system. The next major component category is power plant and fuel. If you remember, our mecha will need to be able to walk, fire its plasma gun and also fly for a short time. Its fusion rocket engine consumes 0.02 gallons of water per hour per pound of thrust. Does our mecha need a power plant or should it just have power banks that are charged before it is deployed in combat? I think since this is a going to be a small vehicle, it would be better to just give it energy banks. TL9 has rechargeable power cells, but the exact capacity of them will be determined later, so I will note down the numbers and put them into a spreadsheet later. Our rocket engine needs a fuel tank, let's give it a normal fuel tank. The fuel itself is normal water, it is effectively free but weighs 8.5 pounds per gallon. The components have been chosen. Now comes one of the most important parts. I have to create an Excel spreadsheet to calculate power consumption, power generation, mass, volume and surface area. I will not talk about it in great detail, because it's mostly just inputting numbers and simple formulas. I just have to tell you that you will probably have to create a separate spreadsheet for every vehicle. After that, there is only one component left – armor. Fortunately, Pyramid 396 has an Ultratech armor design article that applies to vehicles as well. Thus, I will not even use the armor design rules from Gears vehicles and simply use the pyramid system. I will use the solid composition and will ignore the maximum DR limitation because it is not worn armor, but vehicular armor. 
I will use advanced nano laminate armor and give the mecha, for example, DR300. When this is done, I have to input the formulas for ground and air performance, then think about the thrust of the rocket engine, capacity of the energy bank, volume of fuel. I decided to make it so the mecha has enough fuel for one hour of flight and enough energy for 24 hours of operation. The plasma gatling gun is powered by separate 5E cells. When you are satisfied with the results, you just have to convert them to the normal 4E vehicle format, and that's more or less easy. And this is what the result looks like. As you can see, the complexity of GURPS vehicles really is blown out of proportion. Sure, it takes a while to design a vehicle, but there is nothing complex. You just need to pick required components and have a spreadsheet ready. Also, I have just demonstrated that it can be used to design 4E vehicles, but doing so requires some reverse engineering and extra books. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.